Look, first of all, um, I'm just so excited to see so many people on a Saturday morning, so congratulations to yourself again, because I'm pretty tired and I think a lot of people had a good time last night, so they're tired. Um, Manuel, I cried again. I've seen this film three times. I want to tell you that um, when you put on a film festival, you have this responsibility because as a filmmaker, I know what it's like. I've been in the position, obviously, of putting my film out there. It's a bit like being an actor going to an audition. You just get used to rejections. You send it off. You don't know what's going to happen. There's a hundred reasons why a film will fit or not fit a film festival. And both Jay and I were so excited when out of the blue, this film dropped into our submission. And I... I just can't explain to you the excitement because I've made documentaries as well as fiction. There's a lot of things that I want to ask Manuel, so I'm not going to go on too much because I want to let him speak, but um, how wonderful to see a film like that. And I was so excited that we could show this documentary and then I thought we need to try and bring in people who don't always go and see a documentary like that. And also it's about swimming. And so I thought about Alice and I can't believe it. You know, she said, yes. <laughs> How great. I'd love a night in Hepton Bridge. I'm always training, so I never get time off. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to save you, Manuel, for a little minute, and I'm going to ask Alice, what did you think about the film and what do you think about, you know, what we've just seen? Well, I think that was so powerful. Like, you could see the, the two sides of a story, the disappointment and then the joy of doing like a good swim and I cried at both like they both like rip both really powerful like two sides of a story and then getting to see the other side of swimming which is the less fortunate swimmers and the times that they had to achieve are still very difficult like they still would be like making British champs finals and at any club in the country if you get athletes to make a champs final or a national final that is a good club so the fact that those swimmers were looking to achieve those times with only 15 months of like actual training is it's just incredible and the fact that you were able to document that story so well I think it's what you've done is absolutely incredible so thank, thank you for doing it. <laughs> And, and Manuel, um, what I'd like to know, if, let's go back. So um, you've made a lot of films, you've done a lot of different things, but tell us a little bit, how did this story come about? Well, it came to us because of a, a Paralympian swimmer we know, and he was training with Miguel, preparing himself to uh, Rio, and uh, he then gave us a call and said, you, you, you should take a look of what's happening here with a bunch of s swimmers from different countries. There's something amazing going on here. And that's what we did. We took a plane, we went there, and we realized uh, how, how important was what was going on there, and we decided to make a film out of it. Can you tell uh, the audience how long did you have to film and all that sort of thing? Uh, uh, how long did it take? Well, it's, uh, it takes several months from the very beginning to going through different championships until uh, they finally don't make it almost, just one. And uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a, a lot of shooting days actually, but spread through a, a long period of time. So did you go backwards and forwards, or yeah, did you, yeah. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We went to, we made several trips to um, Thailand several times, and then Malaysia, Hong Kong, um, mm. and then to the birthplace of specific yeah. characters that we found that uh, their story was worth to be told, and we went to Nepal and to and to Maldives and. I I think um, one of the things I'm so affected by this documentary, when you make a documentary, a lot of time what you're doing is you're trying, you, you know, you might have a story that's a good story, but you're trying to find subjects who are going to withstand your intrusion of filming. And I, I wondered, um, did you have those dilemmas? Because you often have to choose subjects before you know what's going to happen, especially when you've got this kind of thing. And I wondered, how, were there dilemmas at time and all those? Maybe share a little bit about that. Well, first of all, we, we uh, thought we were so lucky when we found that coach. Because he's 
not only he was the, 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 the main coach, but you know, the character of you know, his speech and his personality was um, very special. And we, from the very beginning, we, I, I decided not to have a voice over, voice off, you know? Voice over. Boys over, boys over, boys over, because we, uh, I, I thought it was more, more important to let them to tell their own story, led by um, the narrator who could be the main coach. So for us, it was very important to find a person uh, like him to guide us. And, you know, as you were saying about uh, you, you don't have... Um, information in advance when you make a documentary as you know you 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 don't know what's going on i mean I, I come from drama i mean i'm used to have a script and and there's an essential tool that you have and, and, it, and it works as a base for everything that comes later and you start building uh your film from the script and you it's a guide but in making documentary or at least this one, you, you, you don't have it. So you, are, you, you, you pretty much are filming without knowing what's going to happen because you, know, you think in the very beginning that, okay, um, this is the type of story I would like to tell, but then comes reality and says, hello, I'm reality, and I'm going this way, <laughs> although you thought you were going that way. And, and then you sit on the editing room after finishing the shooting with tons of material, so many hours, May and, I ask that and then that's where you write the story. And so, this, so the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I lost my voice last night. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the joke always is that you 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 write the film, you make the film, and then you make it again in the edit. Absolutely, and in documentary, especially like this, you do. Um, I wondered. Uh, so I cannot tell you the level of skill that you have watching this seamless documentary as if it was always going to happen this way, whereas I'm sure you were diving in how many hours of footage? Come uh, on, I, admit. I, I, I don't tell know. Us. I, I, I was thinking about that this morning. I don't know how many dozens of hours to come with 71-minute film. And, you know, and, and, and even without having watch them at all because I wasn't filming myself. I didn't use a camera. I had two cameramen, the DP and the second operator. So I sat in the editing room like for months saying, okay, let's watch TV. Come on, play <laughs> over and over again. And, and, and Alice, I wanted to, to, to ask you, um, as someone who's been through that extraordinary experience that they're going through where you've got these incredible goals, um, how did you feel watching someone else go through that in such detail? Because we got to know them, didn't we? Yeah, it, it got very personal, didn't it? Like, I feel like everybody was behind each athlete wanting them to achieve their goal. And um, how do I feel? You could have been one of them if you, yeah, <laughs> if yeah. you were born in... A, yeah, in a different yeah. country. Yeah, easily. It's... It, I can't really put into words, so it's like a cheap answer, sorry. Um, just, it is like from somebody who does swim every day, I know I know what they're going through. And even if even if you don't know anything about swimming, you can see the pain they're going through. When the girl got out of, out of her 100 back race and was sat on the chair and she was just dead, like it's, it's hard, it is, it is difficult and it's never easy to get out after you've given absolutely everything to a race for for quite a lot of time, like training up to it as well, and it leads up to, what, 60 seconds, two minutes, and then to miss the time by point nothing. Yeah, it's it's hard, uh, but e even if you miss the time, it's, you still know it's worth it. Like, th what they got out of being on that camp for a year, the family that they made, um, like it seemed like one, the Rwandan boy managed to learn English, which is something that, like yeah. lifelong skills. It's, it's, yeah. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's, there's only one, uh, one time that uh, is mentioned the word family, mm -hmm. but they were constantly defining themselves as, as a family, yeah. all the time, all the time. So, they I, and I think you've, you've conveyed that in the film because again when you're stitching together a documentary 
there's two things that are really important about this documentary for me. One is that uh, we live in a world of fact trivia, you know, factual television, document, it's called documentary, it isn't. Um, you know, any, any, any idiot can make a program if you film enough hours, actually. But how do you do it? And also, who do you give a voice to? And I think we talked about this, Alice, when we had a, a conversation briefly. Um, like, it's so important that you made that decision not to have it layered with voiceover with an actor or the voice, the authority voice. Now we're watching these athletes from developing nations. You know, it's just, it's just so different. And that's one of the reasons this theme of this festival is the other. And we so often other people and we don't get to know people as people. And, and I think we, you know, Alice, I, I don't know what you felt, but you know, the lack of diversity, for example, in swimming is a big thing in for, from my point of view and from sport and I'm from a like tennis is my thing so it's sort of a bit the same yeah. you know there's not um, and I wonder what you felt about that because we're meeting all these amazing yeah. people as people yeah yeah I don't fit the bill of your stereotypical swimmer like on, on pool side I do stand out a little bit <laughs> but um yeah just get giving them a voice was I think very powerful because you you do see it's always about the top level athletes. It's always about the Olympic medalists, the Olympic finalists, the gold medal winners. And to finally have, for the group of people who aren't gonna make it past the heats, but still have every right to be there, every right to compete. It's, it is very, I keep saying powerful, I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's incredible to have that opportunity to be given to people who they deserve for their stories to be told. Uh, like swimming in a makeshift pool in the sea or swimming in a lake every day and still having the same dreams as people who uh, I get to swim in a 50 metre pool every day which changes to 25 metres like if, if we needed to like like top level facilities it's and getting to see the other side of that is very important and you've you've switched over to open water swimming yeah. am I right in that um, yeah I do a bit I, do, I well, still do, do some pool swimming yeah but I'm mainly in, like for GB I'm an open water swimmer but I still do pool swimming like at just like national competitions and stuff can I ask you where you're because there's a few people around here open water swimming is a really big craze that's just oh, getting cool. bigger and bigger we have a place called Gaddings up on the tops there are some mad people who go up there it's freezing cold oh. <laughs> <laughs> and but you know and it's there's a lot of people who are getting into this yeah. um, d do you like it and where's your favorite place to swim oh, i i don't do much swimming in britain i have to say no <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> i think i've swam in i've done open water swimming in britain like three times <laughs> For, it's maybe because it's too cold <laughs> all the competitions that i tend to go are like abroad like Nice. So uh, um, I'm going to Israel next week. I'm going to Korea in in July, like all warmer places. So, but yeah, that like it is. It is a pretty sport. Like it, it's much more natural than pool swimming. Like you're not in a chlorinated, like you're not into chemicals. You're in like a natural, and like you can see. I've been to some beautiful places. I've been like a valley in Switzerland, and it, like obviously places in Britain are still incredible. Like. It's yeah. all right. You don't have to make up. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come to Spain if you want, you know, to yeah. swim in warmer yeah. water. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and so um, what I, um, if someone will just keep an eye on the time because I'm, I'm losing it. Um, I was, Louise, I was going to say like a couple of minutes and we open it up to the floor. Is that good? We could talk forever. <laughs> I, listen, what I would like to do is first of all just say to you, please tell people about what's going on. We're so excited that we could give Manuel a screening like this because shouldn't that be seen on the big screen? I mean, how beautiful was that? So, Thank you. I would ask you, um, look out for each other. Uh, Manuel's here till um, what time? Tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Look out for the filmmakers and the guests who've come along. Have those chats, those conversations that you're thinking about. I, I'm still so moved by this film and I make documentaries myself and the level of skill, I just want to try and uh, impress upon you that this film has a level of skill where you don't notice it and that's why it's, it's a very special film. So I, I'm really honoured to have it in our festival, Manuel. Thank you very much and thank you for you know, inviting us to 
screen our film to that marvelous audience. And, and you know, it's, it's, I'm very moved. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lots of crying this weekend. <laughs> And Alice, thank you so much for making thank the trip. Me. I hope Hebden has looked after oh, no, you well. Oh, no, it's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. I've loved every minute of it. So. And Alice is busy not just swimming but doing politics at politics, Loughborough yeah. University. So <laughs> she's trying to fit everything in, you know. But um, we hope we see you again. Oh, yeah. We, Louise, yeah, we you. have time for about ten minutes of audience questions Fantastic. now. So oh, up the back there. Wow. I've got... Okay. One there, and you can be second. I thought I was being wrapped up and told. And you can be third. <laughs> but remind me who you Apologies, are. I thought I thought we were told we didn't have time. Oh for no, questions. I was saying it was time to swap yeah. over. And <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. No. I just wanted to. I thought it was just so good that film. I wanted to know the reaction of the swimmers when they saw it. Did they see it all together? I got Did you hear yeah. the question, everybody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were so. Um, overwhelmed with the film. First of all, because, you know, they were able to see themselves and, and also because um, a very special year on their lives was, you know, recorded forever. And we told the story not only about them, but, on, but also about a very special experience for all of them. So they were very moved and um, and not only that, because you know the, the 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 thing that I'm most proud about this film is that thanks to this film, uh, which was watched uh, somehow I don't know how uh, in the United States, uh, one of the swimmers, the uh, Cheram from Sri Lanka, got a scholarship from a university there, and he's going to next year in September actually he's going to uh, uh, to Cleveland, to Ohio, uh, to a college thanks to the footage of the film that he asked me to show them. So, you know, th things such as this one is, are the ones who are more um, rewarding for you as a filmmaker to, you know, knowing that this film is uh, worth uh, the effort, absolutely. And, and am I right, uh, Manuel, that one of the swimmers, uh, the boy from Syria who couldn't go back, he's now a coach, isn't he? I think he's still a coach at the Finan training yeah, camp. Yeah, he he works in in the in Taniapura in the facilities there. He works there in in a way of you know having the possibility of of keeping training there with with because he 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 wasn't allowed to go back to Syria obvious, for obvious reasons. So uh, you know these things are those who you know touch you in some way. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I've got a question here. Hi, it was a beautiful film. I just wanted to know whether it will go on general release in this country. This, you know, I'd like to, other people to see it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this film is now being sold worldwide uh, through a distribution company. And it, it's, uh, it really is out of our hands now as a production company. Um, and, and, you know, I, I know it's been sold so far to several countries such as, uh, I don't know, Poland or uh, uh, Lebanon, um, uh, Turkey, some places in Africa, maybe the States, I don't know. But uh, hopefully it'll get to UK and as well as to Spain, uh, we, we <laughs> it's, it hasn't been released in my own country, so. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm hoping it will get here quite soon. Okay, there's a question that Maya's gonna bring the mic to, um, towards the back of the stalls. Can you? Thanks, Mary. Thanks, a, a comment and a question. I thought it was a really powerful film, as others have said. And in a way, it was a very transformative uh, year for them, but it was a transformative film. I should imagine many people will take away a lot from it. And so my comment was that I thought this really exemplified the idea of the film festival. It's both the other, there were many people there who were the other, but especially Sophia, I thought, who's the other in so many ways. And also the collectiveness of this festival as well. So thank you for bringing that film to us for all those reasons and the themes. The one I was thinking about was it was more at what stage in your production and or photography and production did you see how powerful that transformation was? Was it while you were observing or was it in the editing, for example? 
Uh, tricky question. Um, I, I, I was aware about the powerful, how powerful the story was uh, as soon as we got there. That's why we decided to make a film about it. Um, but uh, regarding the, the film itself um, and, and, the, and the power of the, the, the footage, it was in the editing room while we were putting all the pieces together. It's, this is like a giant puzzle, you know, and, 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 and we were editing at, at, at the same time as we were shooting because it took us an entire year. So in order to know uh, what, was, what should be next step, we had to be aware of what we had it already. So we had to edit it in little pieces. So in that process, as the film was growing, we were aware that there was uh, a story there and a powerful one. Because of, on the other hand, it could have been possible that at some point we would have ended up saying, okay, we don't have a story at all. And, um, and, <laughs> and that was a risk, but it was, it was in the editing room answering your questions. Next question. We've got time for one, possibly two more. Squeeze two in. Okay, so um, the lady in the black and blue top first. Um, th hello, Manuel. Uh, thank you. I was deeply moved and in tears from the beginning. Thank um, you. I'd just like to say something that, yes, it was a film about swimmers, but it was a film about so much more and the triumph of the human spirit and transformation and all these huge subjects. And I would love to think that younger people in the school system might have the opportunity to see films like this because I think it would really tr and truly resonate with them. Um, I'm interested in the music that we heard throughout the documentary because I feel that's a very powerful tool for tapping into our emotions. So I wondered how you go about choosing that. Do, are there specific artists with whom you've worked previously? No, it was the first time, the composer was the first time we worked together and um, I have heard some of his previous work and, and we thought it was the right choice and, 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 and he did a fantastic job, I mean, uh, um, composing a different theme from different character and putting all of them together in, in common uh, pieces as well. And yeah, music is very important, as you know, as a filmmaker as well. Music is it's a key element in any uh, uh, storytelling. So uh, for us, it was uh, a very important part of the, of the film because there were, at the same time, uh, lots of non-spoken segments uh, where you have to transmit some kind of emotions. So, uh, we, yeah, we, we, we used uh, as well um, uh, library music for certain segments, more epic ones, but uh, those um, more personal um, fragments were tailored and composed music specifically. Beautiful. One more question I think we have. Okay, coming to someone who's had their hand up a while. Um, thank you for letting us see such a wonderful film, Manuel. Um, thank you. It's a really great way to start a Saturday. Um, what really struck me was most sports documentaries seem to focus on like the drama and the ruthlessness that it takes to succeed in the sport. Um, and what really encouraged me and surprised me was how much time was spent focusing on the global friendships that, that were created and how much they supported each other and how it wasn't really about um, the results in the, in the pool, but about the way that they built on that and encouraged each other. How, much, how soon into the project did you realize that it was more, that it was less about swimming itself, but more about the friendships and the relationships that were built out of the swimming? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. At the very beginning, I was thinking more about the results, the, the potential results, because we got to know, uh, we got to hear about these people that were put 
in for a year in a very special program that potentially would have made reached you know goals that weren't possible before and that was the main idea at the beginning but then uh, as I got to meet them and, and and I got to live with them for weeks I realized how uh, attached to it to each other were all of them and then it it began to to be the the main topic of the film as well as other values uh, maybe for them more important in this case than the uh, results such as you know uh, equal of opportunities um, overcoming adversity pursuing your dreams all these things are, are exactly the same for every single athlete in the world regardless of the level you know it's the same for Phelps as for them you know uh, chasing your dreams is the same thing for everybody so th I, I realized that was the the things that I wanted to transmit with the, with the, with the film. And also because at the end, it, regardless the the improvement, at the end they were going to be last at the Olympics, you know, as they were, like Sajan from Maldives. But she defines it very well at the end. She says, I don't care if I've been last, the important thing for me is to have given my best. That's the important thing. And the position that I get, it's, it's not that important. So, yeah. I think it's a wonderful way to end. I'd like you to thank Manuel Terra, filmmaker, Alice Deering, <laughs> swimming champion. Um, Thank you, Louise, thank and thank you. you to our fantastic guests. I